Hey everyone, thanks for joining. Today I'm speaking with Christian Boutin. Uh, Christian is a candidate for the People's Party of Canada. He's running in the Papineau writing, which means he's running against Justin Trudeau. Hey Christian, thank you for coming on. Hey, good to see you again, Abed. Yeah, good to see you. So, like I mentioned, you're running against Justin Trudeau. So, yes. What does that feel like that you're running against a sitting prime minister? Uh, well, it, uh, uh, it certainly is uh, David and Goliath uh, kind of scenario. Um, although I, I'm not sure yet about the ending, uh, we're sure, certainly uh, the PPC is gaining traction. Uh, like the writing itself, I'm not uh, like, I, I have to stay realistic. Uh, it's, it, it's a very much an uphill battle. Uh, but I do see, and I did see while doing, you know, door to door signatures, talk to the community. Uh, there is there is a growing uh, sentiment uh, against that goes against the current administration, and I think of all the parties, the PPC is certainly seeing as the one who is the most distant from the current administration. So we're hoping to make uh, certainly gains versus the the last election. So I was wanting to ask you, like what made you decide to run? Cause I mean, you know, you're not a politician as far as I know. So absolutely not a politician. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I've, I've, uh, COVID has been, has been the, the, the deciding factor, I would say, uh, I've been looking at the, uh, the reaction from, uh, uh, the provincial government, the federal government to to this disease, and I'm 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 looking at the erosion of the our charter right, our constitution. Uh, most of the abuse, I'd say, comes from the provincial level, but I'm seeing sort of the, you know, to 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 give an example about the vaccine passport, which I think are are complete uh, denial of of people's charter rights. Uh, it is implemented by the provinces, but it is actually subsidized by the federal. Uh, at the cost of a billion dollars. And to me, like the federal government's job should be to sort of curtail overreaches by provincial governments. Uh, anyway, long story short, uh, even before that, long before that, I thought there was way too much agreement between federal and provincial entities in, in, in so far as invalidating our charter rights. Uh, so I contacted the PPC, uh, said, you know, if you're not, if you need someone in my writing, um, I, and you, you don't have any professional politician, let's say, to do it, uh, I'm down to do it. Uh, but I, they, they already had a candidate, so so basically we we shopped around, and they said, you want to take on Trudeau, and I'm like, sure, why not? Okay, so. Now, just out of curiosity, I'm close by. By the way, I'm I'm not I'm not that far from Papineau. I'm yeah. uh, I'm I'm right next to Oshalaga. Okay, but I, now, why the PPC? Like, I, I'm assuming that if you'd gone to any of the other parties, they would have wanted a politician because it is running against Trudeau. So they wanted someone. They would want someone with like a better chance. Or, or was there another reason you went with the PPC? No, it was absolutely uh, more the values. I went to the PPC uh, because uh, the the other parties, as far as the, the COVID measures are concerned, I find they're very homogenous. I find that there's not a lot of compelling differences between uh, what Trudeau's proposing and uh, and the the overall approval of the opposition parties. You're going to get some opposition by the conservatives, but it's generally like, it's fine to uh, blank out people's rights, but it should cost a bit less, right? And then you've got the NDP who are like, no, 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 do more, more draconian, more measures. And and the block is, uh, don't get me started on the block. <laughs> yeah. Okay, like f for myself personally, mm -hmm. okay, the last election, actually on the last two federal elections, I spoiled my ballot. I just, I, mm -hmm. there was not a good choice for me and you know, as far as I'm concerned, my worth, vote is worth more than the lesser of X evils, right? Like yeah. it's not, it's not a good candidate. And I, I would rather go spoil my ballot than not vote because I figure mm -hmm. at least if I spoil my ballot, I'm showing my disappointment with all yeah. of it. Yeah. Um, I, I was trying to get my friends to do that last election. I said, spoil your ballots. I said, yeah. if, if, if we get, I just, you know, my guess is if you got between like, if you got around 10% of the population that spoil their ballots. That it would wake something. up the parties because mm -hmm. I mean that ten percent 
could mean like a majority or it could be you know, a total difference in the election. People um, would fight for it more than people yeah. would fight for people who don't bother to show up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But this time around, okay, it's not like I'm, okay, I have to vote the liberals out, which I, I think, I don't think they deserve any more power, but mm-hmm. I looked at the liberals, the NDP, the Greens, and like you said, the bloc. For me, the bloc is a non-starter because I yeah. don't believe in separation of Quebec, so I'm not going to you know, support them. And even if I did, I yeah. don't think it should be settled in Ottawa. I think it should be settled in Quebec. Yeah. Uh, like this yeah. between. Yeah. But. Sorry. No, that's fine. But like I, I, those three parties, the Greens, the, the NDP, and the Liberals, mm-hmm. all back C10 and all back C36. Yeah. Now, my, like, you know, I might not like what the Conservatives are doing. I might not like other things the Liberals are doing. Mm-hmm. But if they left my speech alone, Oh, I can still yeah. complain about it. See, so uh-huh. that's where, like, again, like I know when you're talking about values and stuff, I go, you know, I've seen, you know, Max and Bernie speak and he's always talking about, okay, you know, freedom of speech. And he's, he's pushing some of these things, but like, I, I, I'll be honest, like I haven't seen, I haven't spent that much time following him. So I don't know mm. everything he's saying, but like, you know, okay. I like that part, but I, I'm also like, okay. I'm trying to be realistic. And I said, the best chance to not lose my speech might be the conservatives. Mm-hmm. And yes, I don't like that. They voted on, you know, they, they, that they went on bill C six and like, you know, O'Toole and, you know, some of their, you know, like about a half the party voted for that. I don't like that, mm-hmm. but at least with, with my speech, I can protest that. Yeah. Right. So that, that's, that's where my thinking is in this election is if I'm going to vote, I'm going to vote for something that might give a chance to not have one of those three parties in. Like, I don't want any party that's going to curtail my speech to get into the government. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm certainly sympathetic to that argument. Uh, you know, there's for sure. If you look at the, the four options, let's say that you've described the NDP, the bloc, the liberals and the conservatives, uh, the conservatives are slightly, more palatable because of their their at least have a basic backing of freedom of expression uh but the ppc is all in on freedom of expression yeah. like the platform it, it is really a cornerstone of the platform uh where i think like the conservatives are are i would say a little bit more risky uh to back a little bit yeah no no i, I look i'm not they're a little wishy-washy and even mm-hmm. like, the last election, when you look at the platforms that they put out, the conservative platform was just, I mean, it was as bland as sheer was. And, mm-hmm. you know, the liberal and the NDP said it straight out that they wanted more hate speech laws. Uh-huh. And so like, I mean, I'm like right away, but you can't give them the vote. Um, and the greens were again, a little wishy-washy on that kind of topic, but you know, <sighs> I, like I said, I've, I've seen the PPC, but I'm just looking at my thing as, okay, what's the one party that might have a chance of winning? Now, you mentioned the PPC is growing uh, in popularity now. Yeah, there's a Echo poll today that placed them at 10%. Uh, okay, so they've first, grown. A- first, oh, yeah, they, they started at, we started at, not, not, we started at 2% and uh, now up at 10%. Uh, it's an Echo poll. It, it, it has a, a slight conservative slant in terms of... Uh, of, of biases if we look versus other polls, uh, but it's still, it's still massive growth. Uh, so I would, I would keep an eye out uh, yeah. as far as, as strategic. If, if you purely want to vote strategically, I'd still keep an eye out because there's this, there might be a few surprises. No, no, look, I'm not going to, you know, I'll, I'm going to keep my eye open. I'm going to keep watching things. And I think, like I said, I'll start paying more attention to um, what Bernie has got to say. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, and I'll go to the meetings. Like that's one thing I wish more Canadians to do was go to the writing, the candidate meetings and the writings. The because, writing associations, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, you're voting for your MP. You're not like, like a lot of people are like, oh, I'm going to vote for Trudeau or I'm going to vote for, you know, O'Toole or, or mm-hmm. Bernie. But it's like, no, you're not voting for that person unless you actually happen to be in that writing. You're yeah. voting for your MP. So 
at least go check it out. I mean, I, I spoke to John K recently and he's like, yeah, well, it doesn't really matter. And I get what he's saying. Like, you know, the whip, like the whips in the party, keep everyone voting in party lines. But at least mm-hmm. if you have someone who's decent, you know, you might have a better chance. But like I said, I, I wish people would do that, but you know, I'm going to take a look. I'm going to see who's, what they have to say and what the parties have to say. And, yeah. You know, I'm not, I, I'm not firm in anything. Like at this point, I'm like, okay, I have to vote for someone and it can't be one of the others. So like, it leaves me two choices. It's the conservatives or the PPC. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I'm trying to preserve my speech and that's it. Yeah. And the PPC will give you that for mm-hmm. sure. I mean, it is one of the issue that's been like, you know, long before COVID we've, we've known each other for a while and mm-hmm. that the free speech thing, like it's always been a, a primary value of both of us. And, mm-hmm. and part of the reason why it's not just COVID that made me join the PPC things like freedom of speech, uh, they, they're right there as a, as a primary uh, uh, value. Okay. Well, okay. So speaking of that, like if you want to get into a bit of, like, I don't know if the platforms are in released again, like I said, I haven't been paying that much attention, but if, if you want to go into a bit of like, you know, policies or where they stand on things like, cause you know, you get the whole, Canada's worse than the States for this. Like, Oh, it's a right wing. And like here, they'll just say, Oh, it's American politics or blah, 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 blah. You know, like all that garbage. So it's hard to get a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of, uh, uh, of disinformation. Like I know mm-hmm. uh, when going door, door to door, I would, I would get asked like, are you the anti-vax party? And, mm-hmm. and I'm like, no, we're not. We're absolutely not anti-vaccine where we are pro vaccine choice. So basically mm-hmm. you can, you can uh, get the vaccine. My dad's got the vaccine. Uh, I was very glad he's, he's almost 90. So of course he's super high risk for COVID. Uh, I don't disclose. Uh, I know some people like uh, Maxime Bernier himself says he's not vaccinated and doesn't plan to, to get va- the vaccine. I know David Freiheit from NDG, candidate from NDG. Uh, he's double vaxxed and he's, he's being pretty public about it. So uh, what we believe is that it is a matter of personal choice. It is a matter of personal risk assessment and, uh, and we will defend the rights of the people to do it. Um, so same thing for uh, uh, masks, uh, lockdowns, we wouldn't force lockdowns. Uh, I think there's a great case to be made for uh, uh, remote work uh, and, and maybe encouraging certain uh, uh behaviors that limit the spread of this disease for sure. Uh, but as far as these, these uh, draconian top-down, almost micromanaging life measures, uh, you know, not really. Uh, as far as sens- uh, censorship, uh, for sure, there are like uh, C16, M103, C10, C36. Uh, you know, the platform is all about scrapping those, uh, no yeah. question. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, okay, M103, that's, okay, granted, it's a motion. But mm-hmm. when that came out, I told people, like, this is paving the road for more legislation. Because mm-hmm. the way it was written, it's like, you know, the government will take, well, yeah, the gov- it will take an all of government approach to quell racism. I'm like, well, if the government's going to quell anything, it's going to do it through legislation. <laughs> I mean, that's the only way. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, like, it's just, but yeah, I know. I mean, if if that's, again i appreciate that because you know i find that we're worse off here in canada than than the u.s i mean we have hate speech laws whereas the u.s really doesn't you know like they're the first, i mean i wish we had something like the first amendment yeah <clears throat> yeah well i wish i the first thing i would wish about our constitution is that it would not be so easy through the the, the first uh part of it to just erase the rest of it so you know, withstanding clothes, which oh, is, I, I, um, yeah, Go uh, but, uh, but, uh, yes, including, including something that is as robust as the first amendment, uh, that would be awesome. Although, uh, I would be uh, lying if I said we could sneak that and you, you know, how constitutional reforms, oh. uh, generally go in Canada. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to move, to a position where I would make you promises. <laughs> but, no, no, uh, it's, it's not that. No. Yeah, but uh, but the truth is, we would certainly, at the very least, challenge uh, challenge attacks on on whatever freedom of expression mm-hmm. uh, uh, rights uh, that we have. You mentioned um, the notwithstanding clause. Now, mm-hmm. 
Okay. And granted, I was, you know, I was in high school when Meech Lake has happening. So like, you know, I was finishing high school. So our, our history teacher, we spent the whole, like a whole semester just talking about that and talking about constitutional reforms and stuff like that. So I, I was pretty up on it when it was going on. So I saw like how nutty it was, but you know, if there was a party that said we were, we're going to get rid of the notwithstanding clause, I might actually vote for, I know it's like a, yeah. I, like it's an almost an impossibility because like Quebec doesn't want to give that up. Of course, and I, yeah. you know, you'd have a lot of problems and it's just, but I mean, I would love for that to go. Cause it's, I mean, yeah, yeah it's, use that section and then you're taking away all our civil liberties for five years and then Mm -hmm. the the government can vote on it over and over and over again i mean i know they made a big fuss about uh ford using it in ontario but like jesus christ if you look at quebec from when it was passed when meach lake happened and we got that clause in Mm -hmm. so i think you know the mid to late 90s every piece of legislation that quebec passed had the notwithstanding clause attached to it every single one Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, we use it a lot in this province. Yeah. Uh, so, like, you know, they made all this big stink about Ford. I'm like, Jesus Christ, what about Quebec? Like, uh-huh. you know. maybe, maybe it's just a part of an accepted. Uh, it's part of a, an accepted thing for Quebec. It's so it's so widespread that it's we no longer notice it. So when Ford does it, it's more of a yeah. of a, an issue. Uh, yeah, but I mean, it's like I said, like that one piece of legislation. If that could go, if that can get taken out of our constitution, that clause, mm-hmm. that would be awesome. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's right now it, as it stands, our Charter of Rights isn't worth the paper it's written on because of that. That's <laughs> yeah, that's 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 part of. It should be the federal government's job to rein in the provinces when they're they're trampling it. Yeah. So and and right now uh, that's not what they're doing. Um, but going back to the the platform, of course, you know, from from a fiscal perspective, it's it's a conservative platform. So we're we're talking about uh, you know the debt, uh, reducing it, reducing uh, uh, interest rates. Um, you know, under Trudeau, Trudeau has, has upped the debt more by himself than all other uh, prime ministers since the Confederation, uh, or at least I read that somewhere. Might need to fact check it. Uh, but it seems it seems legit, and that's and, it, and that started even before COVID. And with COVID, like the, uh, the 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 floodgates are open. Basically, it's we're spending, we're spending, we're spending. It doesn't matter. But that's going to come back to to, to haunt us. Uh, I think I think a lot of the small businesses today have have huge uh, uh, manpower supplies because of CERB and all the benefits that people still still have. Which, you know, I understand if you're going to take away someone's employment, you have to. You have to uh, compensate that, uh, but the idea is not to take their employment, um, or if you're going to take their employment, take it in a in a targeted fashion, not not make it so universal that yeah. if you're going to choose between a minimum wage job and just doing nothing and get CRB, oftentimes you're going to have people who are like, eh, "Why should I bother?" Exactly. Now, on the economic front, mm-hmm. okay let's say the liberals get voted out, whoever comes in mm-hmm. is being dealt an awful hand at that point. I mean, oh, inflation's it's, rising. It's, it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's so like, okay. Again, I, I'm going back to high school economics here, so I'm probably going to get some of these things wrong, uh-huh. <laughs> but if you, like if inflation's rising, yeah. prices are rising. I mean, isn't the, the idea to raise the interest rates to stop people from spending so that the prices go down. Like I, I, I'm trying to like, you know, like I'm just looking at that, like, look, yeah. if interest rates go down and it makes my mortgage payments lower, I'm not going to complain about it, but I'm just like looking at yeah. like the overall picture. Um, yeah. So this is where uh, I might uh, uh, not want to venture uh, okay. above and beyond my field of competence. Uh, yeah, sure. Um and uh, and so uh, I'd have to to um, get back to you on some of the details. Okay. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. Honestly, I, I mean, obviously, you know, no one's no one can know about everything. Like I said, I'm going back yeah. to high school economics to, yeah. to to bring that up. But um, yeah, no, I was just like, so when you're talking fiscally conservative, like, and again, I mean, I guess I do realize with COVID there was some spending that had to be done, and it's you know it's necessary, and 
you know, for the people who can't work. And I mean, even what they were doing for the businesses and stuff to help them along, that was, you know, like the wage subsidies and all that, that mm-hmm. was all good. You know, that was, when well, he, I wouldn't say all good, but it, I would say, uh, it, it, it was necessary. Yeah. It was necessary, but it was, it extended way too long versus our knowledge of the disease and what it did and what we could have started to do for people who are outside of risk of high risk categories. Okay. Now, because that's one of the complaints I see and I hear about the PPC is, and I mean, I, I, again, just from, like I said, I'm not following them too much, but I can see where that's coming from. It's like, okay, well, all they're doing is saying, we're going to vote we're going to undo everything the liberals did. So mm-hmm. it wasn't like, like it wasn't stuff coming up saying, okay, well, you know what? We're going to do this to curb the budget, you know, to curb the budget. This is how this like, like, is it a lack in, is it a lack of media or is it harder to get your message out? Like, like it's because, you know, everything that you'll see is like, okay, we're going to stop like, you know, for lack of a better term, the woke stuff, we're going to stop this. We're going mm-hmm. to undo what, Trudeau did, which, yeah, you know, like I said, there's a lot of it I think needs to be undone. That's also or, or, very, very or, PPC. I think, I think we're the only ones using even the term woke. Yeah. Uh, but so, like, like, is that a messaging problem for you guys that you're not getting out the things that you plan to do instead of only getting out the things that you plan to undo? So there's 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 two aspects to that. Uh, there's the 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 sort of the media aspect of it like uh how is it not being portrayed uh there's a lot of uh like our approach to uh subsidi- subsidies for the media for example is not exactly going to make us very popular with the media uh yeah. we're not we're not fans of the huge subsidies that that all the media organizations are getting. And I think we're a little bit lonely in there because uh, probably the conservatives would also have a little bit of a a less aggressive way of financing the media. But for the others, I mean, we are dealing with news media and media in general that is very much subsidized and and you don't really bite the hand that feeds you uh, unless you have other incentives, which... You know, us climbing in the polls might be the kind of incentives that are like I've seen yesterday, I think, uh, uh, a report by CTV News on the PPC, which I looked at it and I was like, wow, that's not that's not the kind of uh, outright uh, hit job I would have expected. Um so, but that's, I know that's not exactly the, the, yeah. the question. Uh, uh, as far as messaging, well, we do have a, a, a sort of a, a Canada first approach. Uh, we do have, uh, we are uh, pro pipelines, for example, or pro oil and gas industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, that might look like uh, undoing what the liberals did, but at the same time, like if we have opposed if we have opposed values, and for sure a lot of it will be, it's as much them undoing what we would have done as the other way around. Yeah. Okay, because you brought up the pipelines. Now again, I'm not, mm-hmm. you know, I, like I I thought the Quebec not having the pipeline, all that, like that was, you know, you need a way to transport gas. You need, yeah, you know, and pipelines are one of the safest. No, okay. I like with the whole green thing, right? Like, I, wow. I'm not talking about solar plants or, but are you guys looking at anything like nuclear, or are you like, are you just? I'm just wondering about that because I mean, as far as I can tell, if you want to go green, if you want to go carbon, you know, if you want to reduce carbon footprints, whatever. And I mean, I, I see the problems with gas and oil and yeah. whatever, you know. But you yeah. need you need a source of energy. Nuclear is one of the best ways to go as far as i can tell and i mean you know we're we need to do more in canada like we've shut down a plant in quebec yeah i was actually i was against uh shutting down that plant uh i thought it it made very uh very little sense um to shut down the last one basically you know i always (laughs) said we don't really need it because we have so much hydro in quebec (laughs) that you can say that from a, a just a numbers perspective we don't need a nuclear plant, but I would not have given up the sort of uh, terrain expertise, the sort of, we have one, we know how to run one. If we need to replicate it, we, we, 
we have it. And uh, I agree with you. I think nuclear is is the way forward. Uh, I, I'm not sure that's in the official platform. I'm pretty sure uh, we are very friendly to, to nuclear power. I don't see why we wouldn't be. Uh, I think I, I'm still a big believer in hydro. And I think in Quebec, we have uh, like this this grid that I find is is one of the marvels of of the province uh, and energy is oftentimes a provincial jurisdiction uh, but uh, as far as our our policy goes if there's demand for that oil and it makes sense from a market-based perspective uh, even though we want to encourage renewables and nuclears and so on uh, there's no reason not to exploit the resource while we while there's demand because the demand will will They'll get their oil. Uh, they'll just get them from get it from someone else. Yeah. No. I mean, like, I can see like the whole point of the oil and whatever. I mean, it's just. I also look at it. If you're looking at developing countries, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, okay. If you make it harder for oil to get to the market, it hurts Canada, but it's also going to hurt other people who need that oil. Yeah. And that's one of the factors in the environmental debate, which I find like kind of backwards it's like okay you're asking people in developing countries to go without now because if you're going to go lecture them about you know carbon footprints this and that it's it's, it's a very bourgeois liberal concern right when you're starving uh when you're starving and you need some oil to go get the grocery and you're built oil now because there's a there's someone in a penthouse in manhattan that won't be happy if that pipeline is built uh yeah, but I mean, it's they're, 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 like that's why I was kind of, I, I was even the last election, I was kind of harping on nuclear. I'm like, you know, if you take a, sorry, I'm just going to get off tangent here, but like if you take a country like China mm-hmm. that said, you know, by 2050, we're going to have, was it China or was it India? They both made promises about huge electrical gains. And I think it was India that said every part of the country, even like the remotest jungle, will have, you know, power. Mm-hmm. by 2050 now for india to do that that's going to require coal it's going to require all kinds of other things like it's you know yeah. india does have some hydro capabilities but it's not you know they it's could, not as they could do nuclear no they but that's what i that's yeah. that's what i was thinking like if if we started working on nuclear mm-hmm. you know i know there's some work being done up at chalk river and there's some work being done in ottawa as well like there's a couple mm-hmm. agencies that are doing some work on it but especially like the little uh, modular nuclear reactors that they have now, the smaller ones, mm-hmm. which are like much safer, you know, the, the fuels easier to get rid of like the, the spent rods and all that. Um, that's an industry for us. And we can sell it to, you know, places like India mm-hmm. that want to start powering everywhere instead yeah. of, you know, I mean, like that's one of the, because it's the reason I'm bringing this up. This is one of the things I see the PPC getting hit on. So I'm just trying to like, and I'm just trying to get gauge where, you know, if you do know where you guys are at with that, but because if, you know, no matter how much we reduce ours, if places like India and China don't re- reduce their carbon footprints, if that's what your goal is, yeah. right? I mean, I think that's a little bit of a red herring. It should just be more of just getting cleaner energy, but yeah, that's a, you know, like it, what we do doesn't really matter if the, those countries aren't going to do anything. So I'm just like, why not make money at it then? Why not sell them the nuclear reactors? Why not sell them the expertise? Why not sell them like everything and, you know, get yeah. rich? Yeah, I hear you. Oftentimes uh, when I hear the environmental, let's say, alarmist uh, branches come out with uh, recommendations and, and, oh, we should do this, we should not do this. Uh, a lot of it seems to be just... Uh, you know, in the grand scheme of things, when we compare our, our footprint to China or India, mm-hmm. like we're just we just want to broadcast that we're good people. And often with carbon uh, tax credits, it's just a way to just offshoot. You know, we we build these giant barge and we just fill them with our recyclables. We send them and then we we just outsource the the ecological problem to the third world. Uh, so that's also a thing that we're not uh, uh, a fan of the carbon, uh, car- the Paris Accord and the carbon sort of um, uh, tax. Okay. Now, when you've been going out door to door, like you said, you know, people are relatively receptive, but 
again, I noticed well, so this, the, some case in some cases. Yeah, but like I said, I see this more. Like I said, I, I see this more in U- Canada than the U.S. It's really easy to dismiss someone as, oh, that's just a right wing talking point, or like I yeah. said, especially since Trump, oh, that's just American style politics or Trump politics or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, how much of that do you get when you go out to speak with people? Or- okay, uh, enough. Yeah, uh, we we get that a bunch. Uh, there are people who are, uh, you know, uh, anti climate. We, we're going to get the anti climate thing, like mm-hmm. we like we want to pollute, like we want the air to get dirtier like we want the the, the climate to the, the the earth to heat up like that's not exactly uh what we're doing we're we're we're, we're finding uh, things that are being done that make no sense and we want to uh, scrap them and and just build something better instead but there you find that a lot the environment thing is is i would say a lot of people have a, a preconceived notion uh uh, about the PPC, and it's a it's a tough sell because something like the Paris Accord, uh, it seems uh, like you just have to accept it. You just have to accept the Paris. You can't look at it. You can't question parts of it. You can't say, "Well, that doesn't me- really make sense." Yeah, you have to accept it if you're a good person. That's a that's a general left leaning uh, uh, talking point. Uh, so there's a lot of that to fight. Okay. Um- get back to something we were talking about earlier like with the media thing so i mean there's the french language debate on tonight yeah now i realize when you know maybe if you're at two percent that's a different story but as you're growing in the polls but i mean there were times like pretty much from when i started following it the start of the election the ppc was kind of neck and neck with the greens maybe sometimes going past them Mm -hmm. so how is it that the greens are invited to the debates, but you guys aren't. So the, the rules of that, and this is, this is, I think the, the problem with such a fast campaign, uh, that was just, you know, there was a snap election call and all of a sudden we all have to uh, be ready. I think, I think that in the collective mind, people did not have any time to sort of consider the PPC when the opinion polls that are, uh, critical to determine by the debates commission whether or not a party is allowed or not in the debates. So they take a snapshot very early on and they, they make the, the determination. The determination is final for the entirety of the campaign. Uh, so they did their call at a time when we were at 2% and now it is done. Okay, but I mean, like that, that makes it so much harder for you guys to get any kind of information out like how are oh like i see the pictures of the rallies and stuff that uh you know max and bernier holds like so Mm -hmm. is that like your your main source of outreach or what else are you guys doing well social media is where we where we have to hit uh Mm -hmm. so this is where most of my battles are fought if you if you like Mm -hmm. is uh, writing hashtags uh uh answering tweets from the prime minister or from uh, any of the ministers like we plan to do this well actually our platform says this or uh, actually what you're doing is harming in this and that way so we we this is more or less the 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 battleground for this we hope that if someone catches something that they like they might ask themselves a question maybe convert in a way and maybe then uh, talk to their friends uh, like on the field we have uh, we try to put up put up signs just to let people know that that we exist. Um, we go to uh, like I've been going to anti lockdown protests since March, so I'm I'm already like part of the part of that crowd, if you like. Uh, so now, of course, it's part part protest and part campaigning. I mean, you you find yourself in the middle of an anti lockdown or anti uh, vaccine passport protest for sure you're going to talk to people and you're going to try to represent the views of the ppc that might not even be related to vaccine passport but you try to uh, get to people and talk to them and hope that it hope that it spreads okay so i mean you're doing i guess you're kind of doing like more of the groundswell bringing up yeah Yeah, no doubt that's that we need to rely on that because the mainstream media uh 
they're starting to because of the polls. I think that I think we'll, we'll start to get more coverage, uh, but it, it we should expect it to, to be very, uh, very light, let's say. Okay. Now, when you mentioned, okay, you, you know, you comment, you'd comment on like, you know, the prime minister's tweets and this and that. Mm. So he put out something the other day saying, talk about how helping people, you know, affording houses and there's a problem with first time home buyers. Yeah. But I mean, just two months ago, every single liberal, except I think except for one voted down um, a motion to stop, like, you know, stop foreign buying of Canadian homes or at least mm-hmm. curtail it because I mean, that's a huge issue. Mm-hmm. So is it that Canadians don't pay enough attention to what's going on so that when something like that comes out, or let's take, for example, uh, when O'Toole was talking about maybe privatizing healthcare, which again, it's a provincial thing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Trudeau and the Liberals made a, such a big deal about it. But like Quebec's had privatized healthcare since like the late 90s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Parts of it. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. And then for the housing, I mean, it's, isn't it like promising to, fix a problem that you've created basically when you're the liberal party and you've been in power for so long, you're saying like, uh, like the market, like what's stopping them from doing it from what has ever stopped them from moving in that direction? Like why, Mm -hmm. why turn this into an election promise? Yeah, that's, I mean, but that's, I don't know. I like, that's part of my issue with him. I, I don't, I can't trust anything that he says. Yeah, um, that's a that's a widespread. Sort and of. no, but I mean, just you know, they said they were going to raise or they were going to tax uh, the sale of your home. Mm-hmm. Now he's saying, "Oh, there won't be any." But it's like, okay, you're saying that at an event, but you've got it in writing saying that you will. Like, you know, <laughs> what am <laughs> yeah. I supposed to believe? Right? You know, like, uh, you know, again, do you think that's apathy on the part? Of, like, I think there's a lot of that. I think there's a lot of. Uh, uh, and that's and that's not new. The whole like I've been liberal all my life, or I've been uh, conservative all my life, and you know that's that's how it's going to be. Uh, I think uh, I do think uh, COVID is a is is one of the very wedge issues that basically, if you're if you think the government is doing a good job, you know, a lot of, pe- a lot of people on the PPC are are actually saying, and I I, th- I tend to agree with it that. We're going to face a referendum on, on COVID on September twentieth, more than an, than an election, because like all the parties are all on the, on the same side and the others are not. But in the in terms of the liberals, uh, like if if you generally trust their handling of this, and I think as far as uh, like mental bandwidth, COVID uses a lot of people's like. Um, yeah, uh, uh, brain bandwidth. Uh, they're just gonna uh, say we need to get out of this, and we need we can't turn around, so on and so forth. Let's just vote for the incumbents. Let's just vote for people who are already in power. Otherwise, I, I don't know. Like, there, there's been so many scandals, so many corruption scandals, so many this and that. Uh, I don't know why people would not even just out of. Like I, I could not understand someone voting NDP, but at least you know you're you're sort of telling the incumbents that 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 it's not acceptable. Yeah, but that okay. That again, this is where I think you know biting the hand that feeds you when it comes to the media. I mean, okay, look, he got. I'm not saying that he didn't get like the liberals and the Trudeau got plenty of coverage over the Wee scandal, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm not saying that you know there, there was. That, like you know, places like the CBC or CTV were being overly nice to them, but at the yeah. same point, you know, I remember. Okay, I was overseas for a bit, a, a lot of it, but I remember like the way Harper was treated whenever something came up, and I, you know, and rightfully so. Like there, I have plenty of issues with Harper, and you know, like uh, there were things he should have been called out on, but you don't see that as much with the liberals. You, you don't see them getting that same kind of treatment. And yeah, especially now in the election, it's like they got they got criticized during the scandal, but now it's like we're not we're not talking about these things anymore. Yeah, I mean, and there was I mean, so many of them. It was like the last election. I, I mean, I, I, 
Jesus Christ, there was pictures of him in blackface, and he, you know, <laughs> like nothing happened. It's like, come uh-huh. on, mm-hmm. you know, like give me a break. Like I was a high school teacher, went to a high school dance in blackface. Like it's, you know, yeah. it's not like a little kid, not a high school kid or a college kid going, going to a party and doing it. It was. Yeah. You know, and yeah. then, and then turning around and, 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 you know, making claims of systemic racism and how Canada is such a racist country and everything. Well, I mean, that's the, that's the sort of, that's the cherry on top. If you want of someone who acted like this. Yeah. Okay, speaking about that, like the systemic racism and stuff like yeah. that. I, again, I'm not. I'm surprised more people aren't going after him for. Like, I, I think it was the Toronto Sun that did a Freedom of Information Act, basically, and got um, a request for like information and got the training for the diplomats. And uh-huh. it's you know it's pretty much the same thing that you'll see from like trainings in schools and like you'll saw saw some of the stuff from the U.S. some of the U.S. De- departments, you know. Like, you know, whiteness is, prof- you know, professionalism, objectivity, blah, 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 this is all signs of white supremacy. I mean, like, yeah, that, our diplomats are being taught that, mm-hmm. you know, like, why isn't he being questioned? On the, I mean, like, I, I don't even see, like, the conservatives bring that up. Like, why isn't that being brought, like, you know, you say you're anti-racist, but are you saying, like, I mean, straight out, like, I, I, I'd love to ask him, like, are you saying that because I'm brown? I'm not punctual. I'm not. Yeah, you're not supposed to be on time. Uh, uh, so yeah. I, I'm disappointed in you, Obeid, because for this interview, you were on time. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, stop appropriating my culture. But, but, <laughs> but I mean, but honestly, though, like, that's what he's saying. That's what the yeah. Liberal Party is saying. And I, I, I don't see anyone bringing that up. Or, you know, again, when Trudeau will say things like, Oh, the, you know, that's American politics or that's Trump. I mean, sorry, you brought critical race theory into the Canadian government. <laughs> yeah. Critical race theory is an, Amer- it starts from American legal scholarship. Yeah. It's, it, it, if you want to talk about American style politics, that's Trudeau. Oh yeah. Yeah. As far as this is concerned, we're, we're absolutely aligned uh, to me, the whole critical race theory, identity politics thing. Mm-hmm. It's, it's absolutely an American concept and we are being sold like, so For example, like the Underground Railroad, it ended in Canada. It's like people were coming to Canada to flee slavery. And now we're being told, no, as white people, whether we're Americans or Canadians, we share the sort of the history of slavery. Now, now wait a minute. We're not exactly exactly in the same spot here. We, We can't be, we can't let ourselves be convinced that we carry an equal part in the horror that is slavery because it's just, it's completely false. Yeah. No, but I mean, all of it, like, okay, this is, I, I brought this up with John Kay and I was joking about it. It's just the, like he, you know, I think it was his event in Sudbury a couple of weeks ago or 10 days ago or so. And he said, you know, blah, blah, blah. he's going on the anti-vaxxers and this and that. Mm-hmm. And then he alluded to the government taking away kids of people who won't vaccinate. Yeah. Now, when you look at the population, so if you look at like black and first nations, yeah, per capita, they have more people that don't vaccinate or vaccine hesitant than any yeah. other group. So here's, we have the residential school scandal and he's talking about taking away kids from people who don't vaccinate. So, I mean, you're going to overly affect first nations. Yeah. So, I mean, do you really want the government taking away yeah. First Nations kids again? I mean, like, I shouldn't laugh about it because I'd be like, no, like, I'm, but, not, I'm not, I'm uh, trying to James, make light of the residential schools, but still. James I mean, Lindsay, you probably know James Lindsay, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, he made a, a, a series of, uh, of memes about that, about sort of how uh, any vaccine mandate is actually systemic racism because yeah. most of the under vaccinated communities are, are communities of color. And, and again, as like both as personally and as a PPC representative, I shouldn't. Like we're we we we're for treating people equally, so it shouldn't be a factor at all. Yeah. But when we look at how these parties talk about identity politics, uh, they're basically getting hit at the hands of the beast that they've created themselves. If they're going to play the game of forcing vaccination on uh, identity groups that they see as like under favored. Again, like I don't want—I'd I, rather not play these little games. But 
if he's going to bring that up or the liberals are going to bring that up and we have to, oh, it's fair out, game. Yeah. It's, it becomes fair game. But, but I mean, at that point, I'm like, okay, you want to take away parent kids from parents because, you know, the parents aren't vaccinated or whatever. Or they're stopping the kids from getting vaccinated. Mm-hmm. That's the government going in, taking away kids from first nations. Yeah. And which I mean, you know, like, a repeat of the horror show of the, uh, yeah. yeah. And I mean, okay. Then then you could talk about immigrant families that, that might have that issue or, you know, black families in Canada, like who aren't, where like I said, proportionately they're higher vaccine hesitancy in those groups than there are. in I, 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 okay. I believe what was it? The, it was an article in McLean's recently, 42% of white liberal women are vaccine hesitant. Like they, it was like oh, the yeah. largest block of people who are vaccine. So it was like white, like when I say liberal, like small L, not the liberal party, like, yeah. you know, like um, left leaning. Yeah. Left leaning is like, that was, that was the, the largest demographic of people who aren't vaccinated. So, I mean, again, this, Oh, you know, like, Oh, the right wingers or the, you know, the crazy right wingers that don't mm-hmm. want to get vaccinated and stuff like that. It's the crazy Trumpers. Like yeah, even but, though Trumpers like every other week, they're going to ask why doesn't Trump come in favor of the fa- vaccine. And then he comes out, he says he approves the vaccine. And then two weeks later, they'll say the same thing. Why doesn't he come out and approve the vaccine? Uh, I mean, it's all right wing, crazy right wingers. But it's, but I mean, like, again, I don't see, okay, like from a strategic pan- standpoint for the conservatives, I'm like, he's handing you a gift, mm-hmm. like, you know, just hammer him on that. Like, I, I, I understand about not wanting to run like a negative campaign and not want to do like attack ads. Mm-hmm. But when, you know, there's that debate on tonight, there was a debate on like a couple of weeks ago, like there were whatever, not a couple of weeks ago, like, you know. At that point, you got to hammer him on these things, and I don't yeah. see why they're not doing it. Or it's just, you know, yeah, I, I think we would uh, if we were at the debate. Yeah. Uh, that's the kind of thing that we would do, that no. Maxim would do. But I mean, but it, but it has to be brought to attention, and it's you know, like how does he get out of that? You know, yeah, it, it, he's he's basically, I think, uh, like there's a story that is uh, consistent and it sticks and it's the basket of deplorable from Hillary Clinton, let's say. Like, we know that's just a story, but it's like it's like it's easy for people to revert to that. And so even through all his hypocr- hypocrisy and all, his, all these rules that sort of the snake that eats its own tail, it's like the other story is still credible to the point that this one holds up despite not holding up at all. I don't know if that makes sense. That was a bit confusing. Okay, just something that I read today that got me really um, kind of angry. Yeah, and I know this is a this is a provincial (laughs) thing more than it's it's you know education is provincial. Yeah, the the school boards in Ontario that want to burn something like four thousand books because they're hurting indigenous. I mean, yeah, we've had this like books book removal. Uh, We've had comic books i think no no no, no. that this was today in it was it, coming out of the paper today like it was uh literal book burning yeah they burnt books in ontario like uh uh i'm trying to think of like i think they said they have up to like four thousand more uh four thousand more books to be burned um, or something like that. Um, oh, right. That's, yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Oh yeah. Ontario schools hold a book burning ceremony for. Oh, for they call it the flame purification. Yeah. That, yeah. that makes it all right. That, that but, if you call it that, then it's just positive, right? No, but okay. But like, here's the I'm thing. Not I'm not being cynical. Yeah, obviously, obviously but you know, they're, they're, <laughs> who burned some 30 books for educational purposes, but then it goes on to say, there's like another three or 4,000 books that they want to burn. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, it's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. And again, you know, the same stuff that's leading to this is the stuff that the liberals, the NDP, and to some extent, the greens are touting. I, I just don't understand why, you know, like people just like every single liberal candidate, like you guys push this stuff and this is what's happening. Yeah. How, you know, why don't you at least call that out? Like, why don't you, say something about people you know teachers burning books in schools <laughs> but that 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 appears to be a modern liberal value 
if that makes you cry tears of blood, you're not alone. Uh, I think, I think, you know, there's been a, 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 a bunch of people, uh, ex leftists that are going a little bit more right wing. And what they said resonates with me when they say they didn't leave the left, the left left them. Uh, like I've always been sent, like I voted for Jack Layton, uh, in, in, in his last election. Uh, and, but now I'm looking at, at the, the landscape and none of what these people do makes sense, makes sense. And it's, it's, it's incompetent at best. Otherwise, it's just malevolent. Yeah, no, it's the good. Uh, well, what's like, like I said, what's going on in the, that? That's you know, like I said, that's what I started from the start. That's my stance on this. Is like this kind of censorship and stuff. I can't vote for, and I can't get behind any party that's up for it. Mm-hmm. So it leaves me two choices, and I'm gonna have to figure out which one I'm gonna put my vote behind. Yeah. But uh, yeah, well, I sure I sure hope we can convince you. Uh, yeah, in the look, remaining twelve days that yeah. we have. Look, I mean, if you guys, if it starts picking up more speed, then it might be okay. Mm-hmm. You know what? I might be able to take some votes away for, or whatever. I might cast my one vote. It's not, you know, like I, it's not as urgent to vote for the conservatives. As, uh, my best, my best hope for this election is a conservative minority government. I don't want any yeah. of those parties getting a majority, mm-hmm. but I think my best hope is a conservative minority government. Maybe they can, all the parties can get their act together. And then, you know, you know, if we get another election in two or three years, then whatever, we'll, we'll have something better coming down the road. But, you know, like that's, that's where, where I stand. Um, like, yeah. If you, like, if you tell, if you ask me for sure, if we wake up on, on September uh, 21 and the prime minister is Erin O'Toole versus Justin Trudeau, my anxiety level will be a little bit less. Uh, but, uh, but I'd much rather not focus on the lesser of two evils. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, uh, certainly I'd, I'd say, keep an eye out for the polls, yeah. for the events, for what's happening and, uh, keep that decision for when you're in the voting booth. I don't know. Like I said, I haven't made up my mind. I'm not going to go early or anything like that. I'm just going to wait until the last, you know, wait until the, the, the 20th, go mm-hmm. cast my ballot and I'll keep. I'll start paying a little bit more closer attention to the PPC, but yeah. look, I don't want to keep you too much longer, but I'm I'll, just, ask- I'll just say this uh, before I go. Uh, speaking of the voting booth, just there's been a, a little bit of disinformation going about that you might require like a, a vac- proof of vaccination to vote. Uh, that's all been debunked by Elections Canada, just in case people are worried. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, no, you're you're you will have to wear a mask, so. Mm-hmm. Most so so yeah. just do it, you know. Yeah. It's not that long, and and uh, but uh, the the whole vax pass the vote thing that's been debunked. Uh, okay. I just wanted that's to good. get that out there. Sorry. Not good. Um, but I was gonna say, like, if you want to give a a last minute, you know, appeal to help you, like, and I, I right. honestly, I, I hope you you beat Trudeau. Like, I that, that yeah. okay, I would be so happy if he lost his seat. I, I, oh, that <laughs> would be glorious. That would be that would be the best thing that could happen the the strongest message that could be sent uh about this these kinds of politicians but yeah like i said if you want to give a last uh, last minute appeal yeah so i i seriously believe and we've known each other for a while and and like the thought of going into politics never really crossed my mind i do believe that this is one of the most important elections in in canada's history Uh, i do think that we are uh, a little bit on the razor's edge that the next uh, three, four, five years will will determine what Canada becomes uh, for the next fifty to hundred, and uh, so I would urge everyone to go out and vote. Uh, I would urge everyone to not listen to people who basically explain to them what the PPC is. Just go on the website, read up the platform, look at it for yourself, watch videos of PPC instead of listening to someone tell you about what the PPC is. You can also listen to everyone's opinion, but Mm. at the very least, do your homework, go watch the platform. Uh, If you're interested in my campaign in particular, it's ppc.christianboutin.com. So it's ppc.mynamechristianboutin.com. And I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook. All the links are on on the, the main website. All right. Well, look, thank you very much. And again, like I said, good luck. I hope you do beat Trudeau because that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it would. And thank you so much for having me on. 
And uh, yeah, I'll put all the links and everything in the description so people can access them. Right. Awesome. Thanks a lot. And thanks everyone for listening.